Good evening and welcome to another edition of Fringe Fla, where we talk about stuff that's going on well, on the periphery, I suppose, of the Fla of what's going on. And our special guest tonight is a man who's kind of celebrating a birthday and Windows Publications actually is celebrating its, its what is it now, it's 20? 20 years, Paul. 20 years. 20 years of publishing was Windows Publications. Okay. Uh, we started there way back in 1992. It involved Heather Brett, uh, as you as Heather, you know yeah. Heather very well, yeah. and Simeon Dumitrashi, who is a Romanian. Yes. Now Heather is from Newfoundland, and she had lived in Belfast for a while, and obviously Simeon, Simeon D, as he was called, that was his nom de plume. He uh, actually uh, came from Romania and had been involved in the literary world out there. And then I was born in Granard, so we were three very different people, but we came together to publish uh, emerging writers and established writers in Ireland. That's uh, now that guy uh, doesn't need any introduction now because we all know him. Mr. Noel Monaghan is my guest this evening, and we're going to talk about Noel Monaghan, and then we're going to talk about Windows publication itself, how it's still going after all these years, and what Windows does itself. Noel, let's start with you. How did you kick off? Well, I was in teaching for a number of years down at St. Clair's College in Bally Gym stuff, and uh, I was very much involved with the musicals down there in the school, and I'd been writing a number of uh, musicals, actually, The Pied Piper and Deirdre of Sorrows. And, uh, these were that, originals? These, these were, were originals, yeah, yes, yeah. and it involved uh, the entire school. But during that time, uh, I... I a number of people said to me that uh, your lyrics, they like the lyrics seemingly more than they probably like the music mm -hmm. as such. So I started writing poetry, I think around the wet summer of 85, around that time, it was <laughs> a very bad time in Ireland. <laughs> the statues were m moving and uh, I came up with an unusual poem called, uh, I think it was uh, the Bishop's Gallop. It was based on St. Patrick running around Ireland. Yeah. Uh, converting to, to the new religion of Christianity and actually I sent it in to a, a, an American editor in Galway called Jessie Lindeni. She had set up Salmon Publishing and she said she liked the poem and I was thrilled with this poem yes, because yeah, yeah. this was a literary magazine with established writers. And this was one of my first serious pieces of writing and to get it published was something delightful. Right. So. It started like that, and then I wrote some other poems th that wet summer, and I sent them to the Honest Dulsterman. And that was another famous literary magazine up in Belfast. Right. And Frank Ormsby, the great poet, yes. wrote back and he says, Look here, you know what I mean? There's space for you. We'll run with this cardboard box man, that poem. And that was the second. And I said, Well, okay, that's not too bad. Two poems, you know, in a matter of two months. And there are two national national accepted literary magazines, 
I take it from there. And, and that's when it started. It, it, it gave you, you confidence. No it doubt. gave me huge confidence. And, and see, it's just, you know, getting in somebody else looking at your work, somebody from the outside, they're literary critics, and they, whatever they saw in my writing, they liked it, and I was thrilled with that. And that's what gave me the start, really, you know, Fantastic. and I worked on from there, you know. And where, where do you get your inspiration from? Where do you get your ideas from? I get a lot of my ideas from just... Uh, mere living you know as such in the early stages cardboard box man was a, a man i saw in Cavan. he used to carry boxes on his back and he brought them out out of town and he actually used them to set up a little fire beside uh, he was living in a camp and yeah. uh, he was a very poor man really and uh, i just thought that this was a very 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 sad situation and uh, I, I met him in the mornings going to school yeah. and I saw him carrying the box. So I, that's how I went. And that was his that. whole life? That was his life, yeah. And life. I just called him the cardboard box man. I never really met him as such, except to see him on the road. I never talked to him or anything like that. But he, he became... He was your muse, so to He speak. was the muse, yeah, as such. And then one day I was going to school and, and the famous bypass was happening and the crossroads was there. And when I was coming home in the evening, the crossroads was gone. Oh, yeah. And I said, that's a very fast change, you know, yeah. thing. That, the intensity of that change. So ordinary day-to-day -day living inspires some of my poems that, you know, that have perhaps been more popular yeah, as yeah. such, you know. Feelings, school, I write a lot about school. It's, it's, well. every, it's everyday life now. Yeah. It's not like... Some poetry's confusion. I know that's the wrong I know, terminology. Yeah, I know, yeah. No, I, 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 a lot of my poems are about reality as such. Now, I do use some dream poems, Paul, and maybe sometimes I'm, I might have, you know, a little bit more surreal uh, images. But I, I'd say a lot of people see me as a naturalistic writer, you know, that's as straightforward and it's quite easy to read the poems. You, know, you talk about what's going on. I, yeah, what I see and how it moves me and how it's... Uh, you know, it inspires you really in general, you know. Did you ever think about resurrecting the musicals? I, I love music and, you know, I'm involved with Paul uh, Flynn, a composer, has yeah. just uh, put music to a long Irish poem I've just written. Uh, it's based on an ancient uh, poem that was written in the Middle Ages uh, called Bulla Sibna and we call this Sweeney under a full moon and it's about uh, it's about an artist really or a man a king of Ulster who's disappointed with the whole Christianity and he takes the Psalter from St Ronan throws it down a well and of course the, the, the saint turns him into a bird so this yes yeah yeah Ostracized are, you, are, you, are, you, are you using poetic license there? Because it I sounds am, yes. a bit modern. It is, it yeah. It sounds, you know, uh, everyone's a bit disillusioned with everything at the moment. Exactly. You know what I mean? going, hold on, so, isn't it? So we're, so, so we're flying around in the trees at this stage. Now, that's yeah. going on in the Kilmore Cathedral this coming Sunday, and it's on at four o'clock, and uh, it's a very interesting group of musicians, uh, the organist is from Dublin and he plays in Christchurch Cathedral, uh, David Bremner. And then there's uh, a number of sopranos and uh, violin and uh, the Bowron, of course. The, the this is called Bowron uh, Sweeney under a full moon or Bowron Galley, the, the, the whole, the Bowron of the moon. When know? is it? Just into that camera there and no one Well, it, it, it's on in uh, Kilmore Cathedral. Uh, that's Kil the, out the Kilishandra Road. And it's on at four o'clock. This coming Sunday, that's Sunday, the 12th of August, and uh, I would love to see... What time? What time is that? Four o'clock. Four o'clock, that's brilliant. Yes, yeah. Admission yeah. free or admission voluntary? Or? Uh, I think it's uh, 10 euros. Ten in. Euro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten it's, euros. It's very it's reasonable. Very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> really intriguing, like, you know, the, the, yeah. the yeah. modern preface you put on it now, just... Well, uh, yeah, I just, and it's in Irish, of course, yeah. uh, most of it in Irish, but we have an English translation, so it's a mixture because, uh, again, the original was written in medieval Irish, so yes. I changed the medieval Irish and turned it into a more uh, up to date Irish, uh, the Irish language. But it, it's medieval quite, Irish? Yes, yeah, so that's quite <laughs> difficult. <laughs> that, that, yeah, yeah, it's quite Modern difficult. Irish is difficult. Yes. <laughs> medieval Irish. Right. How do you come to know medieval Irish? Well, I, I don't know that all that well yeah. because I'd have to use old dictionaries and all that. But uh, I, I know the story 
So I took the story from my own recollection of it in English yeah. and turned it into modern Irish yeah. as such, you know. So because uh, medieval Irish, you know, it, it's a manuscript, so it's written in that manuscript form, which is, uh, there's one copy of it up in the... Um, Royal Irish Academy. In fact, there's two copies of it, the Royal Irish Academy, and there's another copy of it going back to uh, the 17th century, and that's out in Brussels. 17th century? Yes, oh, it is, yeah, 1600s. Uh, it was the earliest version of it. But the story itself goes back to 637 AD, which is a long time ago. 637 <laughs> AD? So, yeah, at the Battle of Moira, yeah. uh, you know, up and down. It's, some, it, 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 it's Dal, the Dalria, the Dalara, and that's uh, an area he, where King Sweeney uh, r ruled over, and that was between Down and Antrim, I think, right. around that area, you know, with connections in, in, in Scotland. And another, mm. another link you have there is that the, the first Irish translation of the Bible was done in Kilmore Cathedral. That's uh, absolutely Bishop, Bishop Bedell, Bedell yeah. that's right. And that's why we chose the cathedral. We were hoping that the, the, the dean would run along with that and he was very pleased yeah. with the idea because Bishop Bedell's translation of the Bible was extraordinary. Uh, it was a wonderful <laughs> contribution to the Irish language when one thinks about it. Uh, sadly, of course, the, the man didn't last that long. He died in, I think it was 1642. But of course, you had the 1641 rebellion yeah. and the, there was a changeover for a short while there, you know, as such. Did he die in town here? Was he taken into prison in, in the town? He was, town? yes, he was. Uh, the old I don't know, no, I don't know the, Paul, I don't know the exact details. I thought he was in prison in, one, in the castle out in... Uh, Lock Oak, Oak Tor, but I think I'm, you're right. I, think you're right. I, I yeah. may be wrong there. I haven't checked that uh, yeah. of late, you know. And anyone that's watching this now and, and is intrigued by this Bishop Bedell thing now, please ask at the tourist office because the first translation of the, the Holy Bible into Irish was yeah. done then at. That's right, you know. And now it was published, I think, in 1685 after his death, mm. you know what I mean? So he had. That, see, uh, Bedell had been provost in Trinity Co College, you know, so, which is. And a number of our. Uh, musicians who are playing have uh, w qualified in music in, in Trinity College. So, it's, it's, it's so there's a lot of links, really. A lot, a lot which, of connections. Yeah, a lot of connections there. But I'm glad you mentioned uh, Bishop Bedell yeah. and, uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the link. Is, the link and that's the link with the Irish language, too, yes, as well. So yes. it, it should be, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a new venture, yeah. really, you know. And again, if you're coming to Cavan to visit us during the flare, don't forget to get out to Kilmore Cathedral just to see the cathedral and Noel yeah. Show, which is going right. to be fantastic. And that is where the bishop trans. Did he do it in the in the grounds there? I, I presume yes. And well, I mean, uh, as far as I know, the old building was uh, up where where they have a hall now beside the the graveyard. Yeah. As far as I know, and his grave is yeah. there. It is, yes. Yeah. I actually visited it this morning, so I checked and it's well, there. It's, yes, it's still right. there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's on, on this Sunday coming. This Sunday coming, yes. Ten okay. euros, yeah. very well spent. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah. It's going to be at Kilmore Cathedral out the Killishand Road, like Noel said there. So, again, if you're a visitor coming to town for the flare, these are the other things that are going on, as well as all the music. This stuff is really good, which brings us to Windows. Right, which yeah. no one's going to tell us the history of now because they're celebrating the birthday and that's next Wednesday, yeah. yes. the 15th of August. That's right, the 15th of August we're launching uh, an anthology celebrating 20 years of publishing. Uh, that's Heather Brett and myself. And I'm glad to say that we have a great selection of poets from all over Ireland and abroad. Uh, we have, in fact, the President of Ireland, uh, Mike D. Higgins, Higgins yeah. as well, has contributed a lovely poem, Kaluder, in Irish, because Windows, you know, Paul, publish Irish as well, our poems in Irish yes. as well as uh, in English. And we have published famous poets like Maura Wakanti, Nuli Nigonel, Gregor O'Doul, uh, Michael D. Higgins, you know, and yes. etc. And then we have published over the years a number of translations of different writers, you know, bringing translated work to uh, the Irish uh, some Romanians, uh, Mar Marianne Marin, and then there was... Uh, Carterescu, uh, Mircha Carterescu and uh, Daniel Popescu and a few more writers like that we worked in translation so yes, it's yeah. not just been Irish writers and then other areas we were involved with 
very much so was the young people. Uh, Heather and myself organise a, a competition every year for the uh, Windows publications, mm -hmm. and that involves all the schools in Ireland, national schools, secondary schools, and sometimes we have competition among the adults. Yes. And uh, we're glad to say that, you know, that involves, Kevin Crystal have been wonderful to us uh, and have supported us over the years. And could I just say that, you know, Windows started off with uh, Sorla McAneel, the arts officer in Monaghan. Yes. And then was quickly followed by Katrina O'Reilly in Cavan and then eventually moved to Longford. So this, uh, Fergus Kennedy, so this, this, this actual anthology is supported by the three counties, yes, yeah. the, art, uh, the arts officers in the three counties as such. So we're very grateful to all our supporters. And, uh, and Heather, and Heather, and Heather. We're, going to, we're going to get Heather in here. We'll have to get Heather we'll in Heather. there. Yeah. You have to come in and have a chat with us now because yeah. this is this is fascinating. So the three counties, Noel. Yes, right. Her. But at the same time, it's mainly Cavan. Yes, it's, it's, it's been mainly Cavan as such. But like, see, you must remember when I met Heather first. She was up in uh, in County Man and she was living there in Anna Carrick. She was part of the artist centre there. You know, so. The obvious county, you know, was was Monaghan yes, and such, and Sorla Mockley, uh, was the arts officer there, was very interested. So we started off, you know, in a very humble beginning, we start off with broadsheet publications, which was just the long page, like the old newspaper <laughs> as such. But the rewarding thing is that we had good writings, you know, f from the very beginning. It kicked off from there. It kicked off from there. And then we started off the idea of travelling around Ireland. We went uh, down to the Blasket Centre uh, under the Blascoja, down in Dunqueen in Kerry, so way, just almost out of the pen peninsula. I remember going uh, to Virginia and collecting Tom McIntyre, the writer, famous yes, writer, yeah. and driving all the way down to on the, the Blascoja in Dunqueen to realise that after driving for about eight or nine hours, yeah. because it was a snowy uh, <laughs> day, you know. And there was no such, road. <laughs> there were very few people there, but at lo just five minutes before we were about to go on stage, a bus came in from Mallow with 50 people on it. So we were very relieved to know that that happened. So we have extraordinary experiences. Adventures. Really. Adventures, Adventures all, all over Ireland. You know, up in Belfast, we've read, you know, we've read in Dublin several times, all the different areas, you know, Kilkenny, if you just name it, we've been... It's 20 years, of and course, you know. No, well, you, before um, this, you were a, a school teacher. I was, yes, yeah. I, I, I was teaching English and history mainly in St. Clair's College in Valley Gym stuff. And I love teaching, yeah. you know. I was there for over 30 years, you know, as such, and I enjoyed it immensely. I ended up as deputy principal in St. Clair's College. Uh, it was a very challenging job. And uh, then I was happy to go full-time yeah. into writing because... Uh, the demands were there really as such and uh, I write plays as you know Paul yes, as well yeah. so I mean it's very hard to keep the two jobs going as such. And as, as to come full circle now, to come right round and now just think what no one's just said, the school teacher left to study poetry, academia, all the rest, last year. Go on, yeah. you say it. Oh, yes. All oh, right. Year. Yeah. This, this, last is, this year, is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Last year, I was very happy to know that uh, one of my poems came up on the leave insert. And uh, my son, uh, Niall, is teaching in Dublin. And after the exam, he rang me up and says, Dad, you won't believe it. Your poem, you know, came up on the exam. And they don't tell you. They, they don't, don't. They oh, don't. no, they'd never tell. I mean, it's a, it's a secret, of uh, course. A, you a know. real state secret. Oh, absolutely. You know, so I would never know that. So and do you, get, do you get recognition afterwards, after the leaving was over, did they write to you and say, oh, no, the no, Department of Education no, say No, no, they don't. No, it, yeah. it, that's something that's, you know, it, it's a privilege to be on course, the course yeah. and yeah. that's it, you know, that... You, you, they don't ask you your permission. <laughs> your, well, but I was quite happy to be there. Yeah. You know. Well, so. it's 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 <laughs> enshrined in in yeah them young people's memories yeah, now. Th that's right. You know. In years to come, they'll be saying, oh, "Remember, we did that poem by." Well, well, just, I suppose yeah, yeah no, because well, you, it's on. You you know the way you, they sell those copies of the exam papers for the next ten years. So yes, it's, yeah. It's in that. You know, it's in a poem entitled "All Day Long." You know, it's a, and it's about school because again, I was a teacher, so yeah. and it's about school and how children can go missing. 
even though they're present. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah, interesting, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, I, was, I, was, I was there. You know, was, <laughs> weren't we all? I was the one, I was the one that was staring into space. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But was it, was it a long poem? No, it's short, really, yeah. you know, it's, it's just... Uh, perhaps a page long, yeah. you know, and uh, I, th- I think they liked it because, again, it related to them. It, it, the poem was dealing about how teachers, you know, think with their heads and they're rational, but children, when they're young and young teenagers, think with their hearts. Yeah, they're yeah, more yeah. emotional about things. And they, the difference between, you know, between the teacher and the pupil is playing with that in a mental, you know, simple yes, course, mental yeah. way, you know, as such, and how a student can go missing. And then the whole preoccupation of school systems counting children, you know, yeah. roll calls in the morning, roll calls in the afternoon. And Make sure everyone's making fi- Keeping yeah. files and all that. And sometimes maybe the, how absurd all this can be, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so I was playing on that idea, you know. That's fantastic, yeah. though, isn't it? And now, the windows for for any uh, young person, older person, yeah, anybody, yeah, that's thinking of writing poetry and saying, "Oh no, that that, that just doesn't sound that's, that, that 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 doesn't feel right," is it? Right. How, how did you do it? Yeah, but, Paul. Uh, well, we're open to promoting good writing. That's what we'd all say, and we would publish good writing as such. Now, Heather and myself, you know, over the years have given workshops and how to go about, you know, publishing and how to go about writing as such. But I would encourage people, you know, now, again, to Now, again, I'll have to write. interrupt there. Yeah. For people that are afraid, they say, oh, workshop, oh, no, that sounds too much. I just want to sit and write poetry. Yeah. You know, and a workshop sounds, again, like school. It's something Right, going, yeah. Uh, now, hold on, what did you do there now? Hold on. Right. No, no, no. It's, it's not like that at all, Paul. Uh, when I'm giving a workshop, I usually do a lot of the talking, you know, as such, because you take it for granted if a person is writing poems, that they can go about that themselves. All they need is a pen, a good dictionary beside them. I never go to work without a dictionary, mm. and uh, you know, uh, as such, and that'll help you with the word farming and all that's needed with that. But again, I would advise people to just get their thoughts down on the paper first. Now, editing is very important, and I can help with editing yeah. because of all my work, I have to edit my work. I write a poem. And then I leave it maybe three or four weeks. But I might have 15 to 20 drafts of that one page mm. before I'd be happy with it. And I might show it to somebody I trust and I feel that they know, you know what I mean, what I'm doing. And they, they might make suggestions as well. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's if you're hungry enough to write and you really want to write, uh, it'll happen for you. And yeah. if you're not, it won't really, Paul. You yes, know, yeah. you know, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like the long distance runner or anything, you know, if you really want to do it, yeah. you'll find it. And I went to those uh, workshops when I was a teacher and I found them hard, Paul, mm. at times, you know, because when you're sitting down in a workshop up in Trinity College and you're 20, well, I was about 35, 36 at the time, yeah. and, you know, somebody... About much, um, almost half your age in Trinity College is saying, I don't like this or I find fault with that. You have to be big enough to take the criticism. Mm, so, yeah. you know, so I'd have to say that that's part of it. But it's not part of all our. But how do they get into that position? Pardon? How do they get into that position of, of knowing, I suppose, that the younger person says... Well, you see, you, you know, if I'm listening to them and they have a better idea, yeah. I should know you that. Lip, yeah. yeah, I should know that. And that's, you know what I mean, I'm I'm always open to a better idea, yeah. as we all are. Like you, say, know, you, such. Just, you know, if somebody is just criticising you for the sake of it, you know that too, and yeah. you just ignore it yeah, yeah. in a gentlemanly way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We can't say it stronger than yeah. that. No, no, no. no that's so the, yeah. the Windows, again, is encouraging all the Ah yes, we're, we're we're there to encourage people. We're there to promote, and we have done over the years. We're very proud of some of our, you know a number of our people, like we take a fellow like Joe Woods, who's coming down to launch the book. We Heather and myself published Joe yes, Woods, yeah, yeah. and he's now director of Poetry Ireland. Yeah, and he's a very very accomplished poet. Well, you don't get any yeah. bigger. No, and that's it. You know you what know. I mean? And Nessa Manley, there's a list of them there. Paul Perry now, who's organising the Dunleary Literary <laughs> Festival. At one stage, we published him, and he was on one of our literary tours. You know, as such. So we get a great go, do you joy go to all in these that. literary things. No, do you I go, go to a lot. I'm just down from. I was up at the Carlton Summer School yesterday, and had a 
great day, really yeah. great, great lectures. They were talking about the famine, you know, as such. Yeah. And I'm going down to talk about the famine in Bally Jim stuff in the museum this coming Friday. That's yeah. on seven o'clock, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I, I go to as many events as I can, really, you know, and I go up to read. And they're always on. There's, there's, they, there's no season as such. Like. Uh, no, the, the, well, the, the summer schools, yet. Yeah, there's a yeah. season for those, you know what I mean? And I, 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 I'd be... I participated hugely in the Goldsmith Summer School. That's in Longford and yeah. all associated. The Mariah Edgeworth, you know, that, that literary weekend. The William Carlton, I've been involved with that from many, many years yeah. now. Yeah, that's running, I think, on this 22nd year. In a scheme, I'm a great supporter of Patrick Havner poetry. and yes. I love his work. So I'm involved very much with the Patrick Havner weekend this year heather and myself we were, were launching the collection there so we're not just having a launch in the uh, as part of the flag hole or the fringe event yeah. in the flag hole uh, next wednesday week you know on the 15th we're launching it in dublin on the 6th of september in the irish writers center and then we're launching it at the end of september down in the in the skeen at the patrick Cavanagh weekend yes, yes and i think we're going down to kilkenny so we're We'll go around Ireland with it, you Fantastic. know, as such, you know. So. I heard someone talk about Patrick Cavanagh yesterday on yeah. the radio because uh, they were talking about Patrick Cavanagh talking about Ulysses. Yes, right. Because yeah. it's out of copyright now. Right, that's and right. They yeah. had him talking about Yeah. he wrote a poem. Right, yeah. About it. Uh, right, you know? yeah, yeah. And I was, I was saying, God, he got inspiration from that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, Patrick Cavanagh was an extraordinary writer, yeah. of course. Well... I think the great thing about is he being it, as recognised as much as he should. I think he is. Or really. will he in the years to come? I, 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 I think he is now. You know, as such, I think his brother Peter was wonderful mm. to him. I mean, a lot maybe a lot of people won't agree with me about that, but Peter, you know, I mean, was took care of his works, promoted it hugely, and you know, supported him when Patrick was down in Dublin. You know, you must remember the. When he was there in the 50s with the Brendan mm. Behans and uh, the young John Montagues and emerging <laughs> Seamus Heaney's, you know, as such, there wasn't a lot happening in the poetry world in terms of support. You didn't have all arts officers at that time, you know what I mean? You yeah. had very little support from, you know, government or of from course, church or yeah. state, you know. So he was out in a hard time. I, did, I think Kavna really had a... He said, like he said himself, he, he he had an incredible energy and uh, he was a genius. Yeah. He, that, uh, he declared himself a genius yeah, anyway. Oscar Wilde. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when Oscar Wilde when he arrived in Dublin, he said, you know, he had this insatiable appetite for learning and for knowledge. And then, of course, a lot of, you know, he, he, he got the odd job. He was, uh, he was actually a film critic yeah. for the Catholic standard oh. and that was supposed to be and he was a great friend of John Charles McQuaid the Archbishop oh yeah from Coot Hill which, from Coot Hill yeah originally from yeah. Coot Hill so there was you know there were those, those sort of collections but I, th I think what I was getting on to say about Catherine was that he liberated us yeah from what we might say a little times maybe stuffy Victorianism that yeah. was happening in Irish literature at the time, he liberated us into the fields of Ireland, into the bushes, the, by the side of the road. He brought us into pe the potato pits, yes, you yeah, know, yeah. as such, and into the churches. And, you know, there was a great sense of humanity in his writing. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid. You know, no, just... he wasn't afraid. He, he was brave and, you know, he tackled that his great poem The Great Hunger is an extraordinary mm, yeah. piece of writing dealing with perhaps maybe the savagery you know of being a farmer in Ireland at the time you know in a post famine Ireland that had maybe lost its great sense yeah. of, of living really yes, yeah. as such of being and of being yeah. you know, being as such you know so he he was you know I think he's a hugely important writer you know as such and I like the Catholic psyche yeah. that he, that he portrays you know as such Yeats was so big Yeats was so political at times I mean Yeats was a senator you know and he <laughs> came from the establishment as such uh, you know so a lot of there was a lot he going could be controversial, from. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I, I love, I love what Gavin offered, and I, I would say Seamus Heaney and John Montague and that that school of thought. Yes. Uh, borrowed heavily 
from the experience of Kavanaugh. I, I certainly do, you know, and have done over the over the years, and because I come from a fa- a farming background yes, in Granada, you, can, you, you can know. identify with it. Absolutely, you know. Well, so that's it. no, Ramon, we could of course talk all night, but we're going to finish up now because Windows, the big night is. Next Wednesday, Wednesday the 15th, 15th, yes, at 7 o'clock, and everybody is welcome, and we're launching that ontology, and uh, I'm, the county manager is on our nurse by his presence, uh, Jack Keyes, and we'll have Joe Woods, the director of Poetry Ireland, to uh, perform the ceremony, and uh, a number of contributors, like I said, many of the great writers and poets in Ireland are in this collection, so do come along, you're very welcome. Now, as you've just heard from just Noel speaking himself, he's very engaged and he's, he loves what he does, obviously. And you, you've converted me. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> you've converted me. Yeah. But uh, we, we, I think we're going to have to cover that for you. We're going to, we're going to be filming out there. We're going to try and get out to the, the, the crystal to, to That'd see That'd be the, wonderful. To That'd be wonderful, thing. Paul. Uh, love Noel Monaghan and Heather Brett and anybody. Who, who else is your team? Heather and myself now, because Simeon has gone back to Romania, yeah. you know, so, so it's just the two of us now, and uh, Heather works extremely hard, and uh, yes, so do uh, I. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, so we're just hard uh, Do you have, do, do you go on the internet, have your Windows website? Oh, we have a Windows website, right, you know yeah. what I mean? So you get us on the Windows uh, yeah. website there. And you know, do you have Facebook or anything like that? Or? We don't do Facebook. No, no. A bit Throw old, the line. A bit old for that. No, you're not. No, you're not. Get, get, get yeah. your son to do it for you. My son does it, yes. yeah. <laughs> He actually does the Facebook, yeah. yeah, do do the Facebook. yeah so yeah. look for Windows, and what is it? You can't say Windows because it's Windows, Windows. So uh, Windows Publications. Windows Publications. Look for, time, look for, yeah. Google it and you yeah. can see it there. And the two names to look out for, Noel Monaghan and, and Heather Brett. And Heather Brett. And yeah. we'll have Heather, Heather on here soon to discuss it. Even if she just sits there. Right. <laughs> no, Heather, don't worry, we'll get you on. Noel, thank you very, very much for My joining. My pleasure, lovely talking it's to you. It's been our Paul. pleasure having you on. Yeah, thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Noel Monaghan. That ends French Flower for today. And we'll be back with another guest real, real soon.